it's the next level. That's pathetic. Yeah, oh, well, at least he didn't shank my ass. No, bro. He shanked your heart. Hmm. Is that my bathrobe? No. Look, who cares what he shanked? He knows something about time travel. Um, wait, why don't you just do your thing and uh, time travel us out? No one care to explain? The first time he tried, he got lost in the apocalypse. Second time, he ended up without hair in his balls. The last time I tried, I scattered my family across three years in Dallas, Texas, possibly triggering a doomsday. Any more questions, Elliot? I know. Guys, you're all missing the big picture here. Dad is the ringleader of a sinister cabal that's planning to kill the president. A cabal? Ignore him. But the way I see it, we only have one option. Oh, yeah? What's that? It's time to get the Umbrella Academy back together. Hey, panelers. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And, you know, last week, Mark, I didn't realize until I was listening to Strange Indeed, their podcast over episode four, that we didn't even bring up, I, I can't remember, maybe we did in passing very quickly, the possibility of Lila being one of the other, you know, 36 children. Because she was, if she was four years old in 1993, that means she would have been born in 1989. So she could be one of the you know the 36 other children that we don't know anything about from the whatever october 1989 i i think we questioned it did we a little bit okay we yeah. might have, i haven't really listened to our podcast yet so it's it's i wasn't i just heard uh like i said rima and paik mentioned it on strange indeed and i was like oh i don't think mark and i even even speculated over it <laughs> so, so yeah it's, maybe we it's, did. it's a good question for the fact that you know she was one and on top of that you know, she was saved by the handler. Mm -hmm. And right. you would think, you know, that would be a nice force to have on her side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah, depending on what, what power she has or if she has power, if she even is one of the, the other 36, you know? I don't know. So it's, yeah. it just was an interesting speculation. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So what is this episode about? This week we're covering the Umbrella Academy Season 2, Episode 5, Valhalla. And the synopsis for that episode is summoned to an emergency meeting. The siblings hatch very different plans for how to spend their last six days on Earth. Lila confronts her mother. And yeah, she does. Yeah. That's an interesting <laughs> synopsis. I don't know. That's pretty vague. That's pretty good. Some of these synopses have been very spoiler. Like uh, Usually they're very spoilery yeah. or very vague. Yeah. Either or. And <laughs> with this one, it's like. Yep, this is kind of vague. They just, yeah, they came together, and yeah, Lila confronts her mother, so. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not even sure, like, I'm trying to even remember, I guess that was, yeah, there was a little bit, that was a small part of the episode, but really. I, I bring a, that up in my notes, too, okay. because, yeah, I, I, it kind of made me speculate, and that's, you know, and I looked at what you were writing, and I thought right away, oh, yeah, she might be one of the mm -hmm. kids that were born in 89 but you know as we see in the fight but we'll go into this further once we get into our top fives yeah yeah in general though this was a really good middle episode like it it left us it really i really wanted to go to the next one it was really but it had some really good stuff in it as well so oh definitely a lot of action too which mm -hmm. i liked yeah. and i and a lot of the humor too I just loved a couple of scenes that, that they had throughout it, especially with uh, Allison, Vanya, and Klaus getting yeah. drunk and stuff like that. Yeah. So. yeah, there was a good mixture in this in this episode. At first, I thought it was kind of slow, but then as as I watched it and rewatched it, I was like, no, this episode really is really good. Yeah, it is. It, I, I enjoyed it. I, I think this was the one that I was looking forward to the most. Mm-hmm. And we'll get into that when we talk about it, because there's one finer point that I brought up when we covered last season, mm -hmm. the first season, and 
we I, I finally got it. So if you want to start off with our top fives, that would be great. Absolutely. I wonder if it's too late to be unadopted. So my number five is just getting kind of this brief beginning, the Pogo kind of uh, origin story, but not just that. I really liked whatever they did, whether it was puppet or animatronics or CGI or motion capture or whatever. I really thought they did a really great job of like, especially when he's in the, the space suit and he's in the capsule and you start to see everything kind of go haywire and his, his face just kind of uh, goes through these contortions and stuff that it really, uh, it was really well, well done. I thought anyway, and uh, we really got to see a lot of Reggie and Grace here, uh, kind mm -hmm. of the early years. And I keep wondering what that serum was. Was that the same serum that he used that he gave Luther. Yeah, I was wondering <laughs> yeah, if, it was the same, I was if it was the same serum or or something like that because we we know um, you know Pogo already appeared intelligent or fairly mm -hmm. intelligent for a primate, I guess, before that serum. But obviously, after that serum, he became hmm. even more so. I think. Yeah, it actually that was in my notes, and I'll I'll just eliminate that later when we go into our notes. But yeah, that that serum that uh, Reginald Hargreaves gives Pogo. And it just like made me think back to season one when he gave that serum to Luther. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you know, he's giving intelligence to Pogo at this point. But with Luther, it changed it so that he got the strength of like an ape. Yeah. You know, and that to me really shows I'm like, okay, so his experiments were more involved with apes than anything but he must have been working with dna maybe or something with humans yeah and maybe I, that's where it works out i would love to get like some sort of information based upon that come you know you obviously we're getting a third season so maybe they bring that up at a later time but i'm hoping we get an answer for that later on because i would love to know what the serum thing is about you know at least you know i'm glad that we got that that image there mm -hmm. and then now we know why pogo is as smart as he is intellectual and right and being know. able to talk and everything yeah correct and my number five is basically the same thing pogo we finally got what i wanted to see last season and mm -hmm. i mentioned it before the history of pogo i just love that we finally got that completely uh, i wonder like i said before and you brought it up the serum so i uh, like i said i want to see that i just Loved how they put in Peter Schilling's Major Tom slash Coming Home, the song, during that scene of his development. Uh, it it kind of fit for that particular scene. And I just love the idea of the, the music and how it rings through to what's going on because it's all about coming home. And we see Pogo's crash to Earth and then he's damaged and he has to, you know, Hargreaves has to give him that serum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that brings us to my number four. Yes. Which is Allison and Klaus. I just, I, I love that whole day drinking thing they had and there's, there's their kind of time of bonding together. And it, it, the first time I watched it, for some reason, I really keyed in on Klaus and Allison, but I didn't realize until the second, third time that I watched it that Vanya was right there with them. So there was kind of a continuity issue for me here. It's not major. It just, it, it's, it brings me to the only real not a criticism I have of the show, but it's a, it's maybe the only critical thing I have to say about the show is there's a lot of things that happen kind of off screen that we, that we don't ever know because like, I, I guess five says he's going to go get um, Vanya or he said he's going to go get Allison and because Luther doesn't want to go get Allison for the little meeting. He pops away. And then the next scene we get is they're all together having their meeting. So we don't actually see five uh, going and getting Vanya. We don't see how he went and got Allison and Klaus and Klaus. got them back to, uh, to Elliot's, you know, and then we see him, <laughs> you know, uh, Klaus, why is he lying about seeing Ben? I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, I had that. Yeah, in my notes. I, yeah, it's so weird because anytime Ben's name is brought up, and he goes, "Oh, I don't think ghosts can time travel." Yeah, it just, <laughs> it just seems like, I maybe if it was a, if it's a little dig against Ben because Ben was, they were having, you know, their little tiff when Ben didn't help him with the poker and 
when but Ben's been helping him in the police station and stuff so it just doesn't I don't understand why uh, he wouldn't just tell the rest of the group Mm. that Ben is there and uh, but I did love that he's like he's like do we want to go get tacos we get tacos and Vanya is like well do tacos in the world and he's like, you know and so they yeah. go and then we get that marvelous dance routine to twist in the night away we get uh, correct another yeah. one of those music things. well they I, I think you had it a little mixed up maybe uh, because I Klaus is in Allison's home mm -hmm. they have their day drinking they talk he talks about tacos yes but that was before five picked them up and brought them to the mm, house. No, I'm going to, I just, I watched it yesterday and I'm telling you the Again? order of events, okay. the order of events is, is screwy. Okay. Really? They wake up in Allison's house and, okay. and Klaus is, is drinking and he, and she says, do you He's see, <laughs> yeah. Do you see Ben? He's like, no, I'm talking to some cowboy and she starts to take a drink from his flask and goes, Ooh, no, I, I've got a blender and I've got better, uh, liquor or, or better. Yeah. Better liquor. And then it cuts to five telling Luther and Diego, they need to get the family together for a mm -hmm. meeting and he pops yeah. away. And then he, and then the next scene we have Allison and Klaus. And then it's after they have the family meeting that Allison, Klaus and Vanya go back to the hair salon. Because that's, Correct. that's yeah. where and they, then, they get the and tacos. And then they start, they continue drinking right. and they all, right. you know, and then Klaus gives that line of, well, oh, do you think five would be a hottie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What you, yeah. And, and they just have that, that fun scene, but it, it's, it's a, it's a weird, it just, the, the continuity was just off for me because then the three of them are together and they cut to Luther, um, you know, because, uh, Allison says, well, shouldn't we wait for them to come back? And this is before mm. they go to the hair salon, before they get the tacos. And and she and Klaus says, no, they've got to do their bro thing. And we don't know how long that'll take. And so mm. then we have, so we have Luther and Diego together. And then five has his little chase with Lila. Mm -hmm. And, and so they all kind of get separated. And then the, the uh, episode ends with, Vanya coming back to the house drunk mm -hmm. and Sissy and Carl are there. And, uh, and then it ends with Diego and Luther getting the note from, uh, Hargreaves. Mm -hmm. And it's just, there's just some continuity in this episode that just didn't fit together for me. Really. I don't know if it was just the way it was edited or, or what, but it was a little weird. It was a little weird. Uh, then again, we're talking about five who, kind of shifts through time all the time so maybe they're just playing with time shifts yeah i don't think so because they made a big deal out of saying that no he's not gonna because remember that was the whole thing elliot said why don't you just go back in time and change it and and luther's like well the, the first or diego was like the first time he went back in time he went to apocalypse world the second time he went back in time he scattered us all through different Different times, different times within the world. So yeah. I don't think he's messing. I don't think he's messing around with time. And there might be somebody, like it might be the handler or somebody else, is is messing around with time. But it just this the editing or continuity of this episode was just a little off for me. Yeah, uh, I agree. <laughs> it, it, thinking back at it, yeah, I've only watched it about two, three times. Yeah, I saw it twice recently. Obviously, the first one I binged, but mm -hmm. uh, watching it the two times past, yeah. And I, the, in my head, I was thinking that, you know, five had brought them back. They had the meeting and then they decided out of the blue, let's just go to the salon, uh, get tacos, go to the salon and have a drinking. Right. Right. Fun. Yeah. And that's kind of the way it, it went. It just was weirdly the way it was all put together just for me. Yeah. And that would bring me to my number four, number which, four. yeah, that would be Luther's beginning when he first gets to that particular time when he first shows up in what was it 1960 or 1961 I yes forget. i can't remember we 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 said what year he got there i can't remember was he the first one yes yeah it seems so, like he was the first one to be there yeah so. so it was either 60 or 61 i don't remember we had that in our notes but uh but yeah yeah and he goes out and he the first thing he does once he gets there after screaming out allison with next to the homeless guy mm -hmm. uh he starts to seek out reginald the father mm -hmm. hargreaves himself and he was all prepared to find him and tell Reginald pretty much everything. I'm from the future. I'm your son. You're, mm -hmm. You adopted all of us. And goes through the story. 
but the fact that you know Luther looks around, he sees a party going on in the house, which he's probably never ever seen in mm -hmm. his life while living there. Yeah, and this is something that is unlike Reginald. And but basically, Reginald tosses him aside, saying, "You're not my son," and oh, that's crazy. And now Hargreaves knows that the kids uh, about the kids and knows what you know what's to come regardless of his not acknowledging it mm -hmm. you know he he has a little bit of this information because luther already put that in his brain and he's not what luther expected because like i said he was having the party and everything but now we know why he was being harsh on them when the others approached him <laughs> you know he's yeah. attacking them and stuff and you know it, it's and then the the cool part about the scene, though, is Luther tells him about knowing about the moon base and his experiments on apes. And that's what really triggers Reginald because he's like, how does anybody else know about that? Right. In his head, you could see the reaction in his face. And Luther states, he says monkeys to Reginald and then Reginald corrects him. He goes, no, they're apes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This actually was my number three uh, as well. So I'll go right into what I had uh, about this, this whole part. Cause I, I do love, I, I agree. I totally agree with you. I love that we, we get, cause it's been the question we've had the first four episodes is why is Luther so disillusioned? Why is he so like in this dark place? And we get to find out yeah. it was because basically when he got there, his dad basically rejected him and it, it doesn't, there's a couple of things that that I'm not sure. Maybe I'm I'm overthinking it, but I'm almost wondering if if Reginald did believe him or or knows about him, but also knows that he's out of time. That there's a that there's a time problem here. Probably, yeah. And and so maybe he just did. Maybe he didn't expect Luther to react the way he did, or or something. But definitely, he he definitely. Uh, that rejection from Hargreaves to to Luther has definitely scarred his character, and I, I do love the fact, and I, I want to make sure I, I don't forget to bring this up. I love that the the bus driver is the one that kind of shows compassion mm. to. Hey, he doesn't have enough money yeah, to get on, and he and just just get on there, smells, and he smells. But he says, "Oh, go ahead and get on there," <laughs> and it just it's just one of those things that we haven't seen a lot of that from you know he looked to be a black character so i was kind of it was nice that we got that that image and uh, right. so yeah I, I just i think we might hear some more about this when they actually meet reginald and that might be the next episode when he and diego have their light supper i thought that was interesting uh, when <laughs> he emphasized the word light yeah especially since luther has, has been ton. eating yeah he's been eating <laughs> a lot uh and that was another thing that strange indeed mentioned i guess there's a there's a there's an arc in the comics where luther kind of gets fat from eating a lot and, oh really and so they're they're wondering <laughs> if this was kind of a homage is is always eating is kind of a homage to that uh uh comic storyline so i don't know maybe it is maybe it isn't it just seems it seemed kind of cool they brought they brought it up on their their podcast uh you know and, and that's when he leaves the family meeting is when five brings up their father so yeah and to add on to reginald when luther had that conversation he brings it up saying that in 1989 meaning he actually gave them reginald the date yeah so now that would stick in reginald's mind for him to seek out these kids yeah, and like I said, that's that's an interesting. That's changing time at that point. You know, that's like a kind of like a Back to the Future thing. Well, you that's know? an interesting way to look at it. Is that did Hargreaves maybe this is where Hargreaves finds out about the 1989 uh, children and that he he adopts some of them, or has he already known about it? We speculated last season when he released those things into the air that he was from his whatever planet he was on. That mm -hmm. uh, that maybe. Anyway, so I, I think this is all stuff we're gonna we're gonna find out more maybe down the line or or maybe not. But yeah. So since that was my number three, I think that brings us to your number three. Yeah, which would be well the cracking of the window when Carl and Sissy mm. had their little bit of an argument uh, about getting away from. Uh, and it was basically in front of Harlan and Vanya at that point when Harlan was playing with his uh, operation game. Yeah. And Vanya was sitting there too, and she was being all uncomfortable. Obviously, Harlan was just the w as well, but he's not very verbal. Mm -hmm. And you could see the intensity between both Harlan and Vanya 
you know, and the Harlan's operation game is going crazy because he's hitting everything and the noise is, mm-hmm. and the noise is going off. And then all of a sudden you see some sort of power thing between them and then the crack on the window. Yeah. So which person did that come from? Mm. And I was thinking maybe it was Harlan. It could be. I, I hadn't I hadn't thought about that, but I definitely knew you. Vanya's eyes do go white, and Harlan yes. sees her. So mm-hmm. I, I think there's def- and he shows a little bit of compassion to her yeah, too. He, he holds her hand, and touches her. Yeah. So I, I'm I'm sure this is part of of just us you know to remind us that most of the time when Vanya uses her powers it's because she's becoming upset or she's angry or afraid and yeah that's I, when her powers come out right right and last uh, episode was the only time or two episodes ago when she saved or was that last yeah it was last episode when she saved Harlan is the only time we've seen them come out in kind of a controlled manner so that was that was interesting yes uh, so my number two is just that the family, the family finally figures out that everything in their lives is kind of centered around the Kennedy assassination. That that even in the first season, you know, we had moments of this when Phi reveals that it was the day of Kennedy's assassination, that he finally discovered the right formula so that he could get back to them. And mm-hmm. so there's definitely – we're definitely going to have – if there's not going to be a meeting between the two fives, there's definitely be, going to be some kind of story arc, I'm sure, between the two fives, the adult five and the young the young five. But I thought that was was really great. And, and just the fact that Diego is so obsessed with, with this, that, <laughs> yeah. he, that he's the one who makes the connection and goes, you know, he tells Luther, you're working for Jack Ruby. And, and he even speculates that maybe this family that Vanya's with may have some sort of connection to Kennedy yeah. and he's like I, I, I bet we find out that this is is connected and, and so uh it'll be interesting to see if that brings true or if uh, uh this is just a red herring for us all to chase down that is true and I just love Diego's obsession with yeah. <laughs> Kennedy's assassination exactly yeah I I would not be surprised and it really does point towards the whole grassy knoll situation during Kennedy's assassination so I anticipate seeing a lot of those scenes because that is a monumentous thing that happened in in history exactly. to see that and it's been covered all over and over again you know mm-hmm. there there there's been a major movie out there about oh, it more than about... one there's lots of movies out there about it but yeah oh yeah, definitely you're right. you're right but i'm just saying that's like the, this has been done over and over again mm-hmm. so it'd be curious to see what the, the twist would be yeah. on that you know yeah yeah so that would bring me to my number two your number two yes so that would be all of them together when Phi brings Allison and Klaus to mm-hmm. meet the rest of them. I just love that they came together, you know, just to see all of them. So it's like, all right, this is happening. They're they're going to do this, you know. It's that mid-episode mm-hmm. of the show, so you know that things are going to happen. So the the fact that we see Allison hugging Vanya yeah. because I think, what was it, the, after the last time that she saw her? is when her throat was cut. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and the fact that Klaus just coming in and, and then giving a hug to, on, getting in on that. And and then, of course, Klaus asking, did we all just get a little sexy as he walks in? <laughs> I had that, yeah, I had that quote in my uh, in my notes that uh, uh, I thought that was a great a great line from Klaus there to, to break up the tension. And Yeah, it was a nice moment. But we, we know that once they are all together, like I said, this is the beginning or maybe it's the beginning of the end. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, because I mean, you know, as as what as I mentioned earlier, what happens is they all end up separating. Uh, well, not all of them, but they all kind of go their separate ways. There by the end, it's it's Vanya yeah. goes back to the farmhouse. Allison, we see Allison go back to Ray, and she's going to talk to him. Uh, Klaus goes back to his his uh, his cult, and uh, Diego is uh, where did Diego? Oh, Diego and Luther were the only ones that were together. Because mm-hmm. five was fighting with with Lila, so um, so yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Ray and Allison. Is is he is she going to get him to believe her that she's not a you know she's not a plant by the cops that she's actually has this superpower, and uh, what's going to happen there, and and then of course what's going to happen between Vanya and Sissy as she was almost 
almost sounded like Sissy was kind of rejecting her at, at one yes. point. Yes, like it was like a one-time fling. Yeah, or, that, was just, yeah. that was just pillow talk. And the, that was just morning talk, you know. And uh, yeah. and you're like, oh, it just breaks your heart. But uh, yeah. so it's going to be interesting in the next episode. So it, it's like you said, this is kind of that mid-season uh, kind of thing that Netflix does really well, I think. Yeah, it's that middle half of like, – it's like you already had your first act. This is the middle act, and then we're mm-hmm. going to go right into the third. Exactly, exactly. Uh, so my number one is, uh, as I started to talk about, is that fight between Lila and and Five uh, set to the Interrupters, the bad guy, which I think we haven't heard that since Brightburn. Is it Brightburn that had that uh, song there at the end? Uh, I'm the bad guy. That yeah, yes. Try to sing it. But um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, this this show is you know it does a really great thing with this with the music and with these fight scenes and the dance things and it just was really there was a the first time I watched it I kind of thought does she have a power like is she teleporting mm. herself or something like five is and then of course five figures out that it's the handler stopping time and allowing her to move. They just weren't showing us because we've seen the handler do that before with that uh, episode in season one where she stopped time and then talked to, was able to to separate five from that stopped time moment. So five figures out that that's what's going on here is that the handler is, is stopping time and allowing Lila to move out of the way or, or yeah, which, Kind of makes me think, because at the very end, Five had the upper hand, and this was my number mm-hmm. one, too, that, that fight between Five and Lila. Yeah. I was waiting for this to happen for a while now, mm-hmm. you know, but the choreography was great and how they did it, but I figured L- Lila was just a regular assassin based upon how was Five was able to, you know, get the upper hand, mm-hmm. and she had nowhere to go. You would think if she had a power, she'd be able to get out of his foot, you know, on her throat. But of course, you know, at... At the very end, this is a setup by the handler to make some sort of deal again, as she usually tries yeah, to do. Yeah, and we'll probably find out later uh, again what's what's going on there. Exactly. Okay, so we've got some notes. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, let's see. Um, I don't remember Grace having the the robot. Grace didn't have a Texas accent, right? No. No. Okay. No. So this is, I think that that just confirms for us. If we weren't sure last episode, this confirms for us that this is probably the real grace that the robot uh, was, was based upon. And uh, something jumped out at me in the second time watching this that I think maybe what is getting five suspicious is the fact that Lila has not questioned at all the fact that, that they call him five. Correct. Like, like she's yeah. She's she just like, accepts it. Yeah. She's like, your brother's name is five. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I know. You would think it's like, why do you call him five? Because he has five fingers, five toes. Right. And, yeah. Or, yeah. Or what? What's the point? Why are you? And and so it would be one of those things where somebody might key in on that fact that that oh, it, you didn't even find it weird that we were calling him five. Correct. Yeah. Like, why are you giving a number to your sibling? <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be number four if that were the case. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What was one of yours? You've only got a couple there. Well, the conversation we already topped on it with Lila and the handler. The handler thinks that Lila is too full of herself with all the missions that she has done oh, already. Oh, you're right. That was at the beginning of the episode, wasn't it? When she was in the hotel yes. room and she's drinking. Okay, now I. And then we start to see a little bit her of infatuation with Diego because she was just right. like, "Oh, well, just get rid of Diego," and she's like, eh. okay. "It's like you know, she's skirting around it because she really." likes Diego that much, you know. And and it became more of like the 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 mission to get five. Yeah, yeah. And then I, I noticed and I noticed it last week, but it was really it stood out to me this week is that member of the twelve that always wears sunglasses. And I guess uh I think it was Paik on Strange Indeed mentioned that that's modeled after a real guy who they think was part of this cabal. Uh so I, I didn't realize that. But I guess he's modeled yes. after an actual guy who wore sunglasses all the time. Mm. Uh, and then you kind of had this, I'm, I'm still unclear about the whole thing with Diego's knife. I mean, I, because the Swedes were already set to kill 
all the kids. Yeah, but they need some sort of motivation, I think. Well, but and I don't when, see, that's what I don't get. There's they don't need any more motivation than what they have. I, I think it had to be Lila or the handler did that did that. So yeah, had, well, I'm pointing to more towards. I was no, pointing it was more the handler towards because because Lila stole the knife and she gives it to the handler and she goes here. Oh, okay, I, so yeah, it's got to be the handler then. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just saying I don't understand what the plan is because they're already uh, you've you're. Like it just didn't. It's it's not tracking with me. Why why she would May, make them more aggressive to kill? Diego well, maybe or, that way or, she has the the group take them out faster. You know, they see that they're coming after them more, so they'll I, just I use their power to get rid of them. Because she doesn't like, even though she sent them out on that mission, her mission was her personal mission, the handler's mission, was to get five, and to manipulate him. So if they eliminate five, then okay. So okay, hurt. I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. If that's if if it's if it's to point them at Diego rather than five. Okay, correct. That makes that makes because sense Lila then. is trying to protect Diego at times, right? And I think the handler caught no, no, on she's to trying that. To, like, no, she's trying to. Yes, yes, you're right, Lila. The handler recognizes that Lila likes five or has an infatuation Correct. with him and with Diego. With Diego, yeah. I'm sorry, with Diego. And the handler wants to keep five alive. She hasn't mm -hmm. said why yet. She's just made it very clear that she wants to keep five alive. So I okay, that makes sense then why she would kill one of the Swedes to make them focus on Diego more. Because that gets Diego out of Lila's life and that gets uh, gets their attention off from killing five. Okay, okay, I'll yeah. go with it. That sounds that sounds reasonable. That's what I was coming up with with in that idea. So, <laughs> if anybody disagrees, just let us know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and then it was on my second watch. I realized I did, it was it made me chuckle, even though it was very macabre. Was that they had the guy's leftover leg when they did their little Viking funeral thing? The Swedes for their their member they got blown up by the mine. They had his leg in the boat because that's all they could, had left of him. And it yeah, just, it yeah, just I caught that chuckle. in the first watch actually, and I started. Of laughing us yeah that's it, all it they got me, left of him made me chuckle both <laughs> this time because i realized oh that's his foot in the boat okay i get it that's all they had to yeah. burn or bury yeah. you know yeah i i just it was funny and i thought it was kind of cool the way they tracked that arrow uh and and shot it from you kind of see it go through the sky and it almost looks like vanya sees it but she, i don't think she saw it uh i think it was just meant to be a good scene transition yeah, <laughs> but it, I, I, I still get a chuckle out of yeah. that stupid scene. <laughs> we already talked about the one that uh, last one I had. It was about Colossus' reluctance to say, mm -hmm. you know, that Ben is with him. Yeah. But I still find that funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've got a few quotes here. Yeah, uh, you want to start with yours? Yeah, I. The first one would be from Diego, and he says, "You're all missing the big picture here. Dad is the ringleader of a sinister cabal." That's planning to kill the president. And I just love Luther's reaction. He goes, cabal? After he's like eating a whole bowl full of scrambled eggs. Yeah, yeah, a giant <laughs> bowl of scrambled eggs. Yeah, Um, my first one was, it just is that quick little scene we have where Grace says to, to Reggie, she says, Reggie, he's sleeping. And it just, it was just so sweet the way she said it. And it just showed us so much that in that one little scene, we got to see so much of what was going on between that relationship there and whether there's a romantic relationship between grace and, and Reggie, there's definitely a kind of a maternal thing between grace and, and Pogo. And I thought that was, that was very touching. Yeah, definitely. Last one I would have would be Elliot saying, Oh, I, I would love to see an energy tentacle. And that was after Diego was playing with the knife, explaining that Vanya had him suspended in the air, sucking a life out of him with the energy tentacle. Yeah. Uh, the last season at the end. Yeah, that was uh, that was good. So one of the ones I had was uh, Ben when he's talking to Klaus. He says, "Curious, how many rock bottoms are you going to hit before you start taking care of yourself?" Um, and then Diego, when they're talking, when Luther tells him the story about being rejected by their father, he says, uh, "Bro, he shanked your heart." <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and then of course you already brought up the one from klaus when he says i know this is impossible but did we all get sexier <laughs> yeah yeah so. exactly and uh and the last one i had was just, just real another real quick one but i thought it was a very interesting philosophy from diego when 
Luther's complaining about that, you know, we're not important. We're, we're not going to change the world. And Diego says, everyone changes the world, Luther, everyone. And it's scary, but that's kind of the deal. And I really just liked that whole interaction between the two of them and that kind of philosophy, that idea that every, the world is important. Everyone is important to the world. You know, that whole idea of no one person, we don't lose one person for no reason or, or, you know, that everyone has something. And I thought that was just kind of cool. Yeah, that is, that's nice. And that was it. That's it. That's our top fives and our quotes. That was a quick one today. Uh, yeah. Uh, no feedback. I kind of looked at the, the, the email. The email, I yeah. didn't see anything. And maybe, I guess we need to post something for next week. Definitely get something posted in the Facebook group uh, for episode yeah. six and see if people will, uh, uh, will give us some, uh, some feedback there. But uh, you've got some comic news for us. Yeah, the only one that I, I would have would be it's sad, but uh, you and I both heard it last night as we were doing a movie watch with Ben as we were watching Bill and Ted face the music, and sadly enough, Chadwick Boseman passed away after a four-year battle with colon cancer. Mm. I personally, I just loved his performance as Black Panther, and he's done a lot of historical you know, people mm. in movies as well, so... You know, I, I, he's going to be missed, and he was such a talent. So the state of the MCU is going, you know, gonna going to have to change, I guess, with this because you know Black Panther is supposed to be a big part of what goes forth. Yeah, had they filmed that sequel yet, or was that still in the no, works? No, they that hadn't. was still in the okay. works. So, mm -hmm. but my my theory is is that they could easily make it his sister. Yeah. And she taking on. Oh yeah, mantle. they could, bring, and they yeah, could they, easily CG and yeah, yeah, him like losing a battle or something. But you know that that to me uh, that that was a hard one to hit, and mm. you know we're doing this Saturday, August 29th, and we heard it last night, 28th around, I, I guess around 10 o'clock or something. So uh, the podcast uh, recommendation I have is that John and Derek of TV podcast industries, they are covering Lovecraft country on HBO, which I absolutely love. It's, it's a great TV show right now. They mm -hmm. uh, they're releasing it. I think they're releasing it right now. They're releasing it both on their dreadful podcast feed and yes. on the main feed as well. But I think mm -hmm. when they start the boys, they're going to switch to just the dreadful. I would think they'll switch to just the dreadful podcast. I don't know if, if you're following TV podcast industries out there, check them out. Lovecraft country. It's a great, a great show. They, mm -hmm. they, they got some early, you know, they got some of the episodes early, uh, but they're still releasing weekly. So I'm sending them voicemails at, uh, at some point that'll catch up or I'll catch up to them. They're really cool. Plus if you guys are, that are listening, if I have not got into Lovecraft Country, basically it's in the same era of the Umbrella Academy now what they're doing in the 60s. So it's around that time. Uh, I think it's uh, around the Oklahoma riots, wasn't it? No, 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 no. This is, this is uh, just after the Korean War. So it's, oh, it's, really? it's you know, mid to late 50s is uh is when the time craft uh, time frame for this is because he was coming back from the korean war the main war the main okay character. so yeah. yeah there's there's a lot of racial tension in it too by the way just to yeah give, i did not informed. know i didn't know that that hp lovecraft was such a uh, was a, a very big racist i did not know that yes and yeah and so this is not a show about him it's not about lovecraft but what it is it's about his stories it's it's kind of yeah. follows some of his some of his stories but it's also very clear that they're showing the the same kind of racial stuff that we're getting a little bit of in the umbrella Academy. And it's just another one of those kind of social commentaries that we're getting of the time today that we really have not progressed as far as we thought we had. That's a, a good one to recommend. Yeah. Definitely TV podcast industries. The one I would have would be, uh, I, I suggest everybody go listen to run for your lives podcast on the pirate core entertainment. And yes, this is brand new news. It should have been in news, mm. but I launched the Pyrocore Entertainment Network on, you could find that at pyrocoreentertainment.com. And we launched it with Run For Your Lives with Daphne and Paik. And the first episode is up and you could listen to them and their thoughts and review on the movie Tremors. So just check out Pyrocore Entertainment. Follow us there on our Facebook page. Check out our website. There will be definitely a 
another podcast coming to come within the next few weeks that I'm working on. I will be looking for people to come on just to talk about cool things. The subject for that one particular podcast will be action movies, so anything from the 70s and up. And basically, we'll be reviewing those particular movies, just like how Daphne and Paik are just going through all different monster movies, uh, disaster movies, and anything that makes you run for your life. So <laughs> check that out on that out on Pyrocore Entertainment, and please follow us, follow them, and check them out on Spotify. Eventually, you'll get that on Apple Podcasts and on Google Podcasts. So since it was just launched yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Well, we can be heard on just about any podcast player of choice. You can find Panels to Pixels podcast. We also have a website, as Mark just mentioned, Panels to Pixels podcast.com. We're on Facebook on with the facebook.com slash Panels to Pixels. You can email us at Panels to Pixels one at gmail.com. That's Panels to Pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle. The number one at Gmail dot com uh, you can also call us at 845-350-2095 that's 845-350-2095 we are on youtube under panels to pixels podcast there so subscribe to our channel give us a thumbs up and uh, of course you can send us feedback for any of the episodes of the umbrella academy uh season two just make sure you mark it because um uh, Mark it as what episode you're sending us about because Mark and I are doing one episode a week right now. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll see how things go here in the next few weeks if we decide to double up or not. But uh, right now we're still one episode a week. So next week we will be doing episode six of the Umbrella Academy. I have not watched it yet, so I probably will watch it as soon as we get done podcasting about it because I want to see what happens next. Yes. <laughs> and where else can listeners hear us? Well, I could be found right here on Panels to Pixels, as well as sending out feedback to our friends that do podcasts as well. So also keep in mind, like I said, Daphne and Paik have launched Run For Your Lives, their podcast. I will be guesting on a later episode when it comes out, and probably in another month, on one of the movies that they're covering. So I'll be on that. So you could keep listening out for them to hear me there. And... Steve, where could you be found? Well, I, as well, can be heard right here on Panels to Pixels, and I send voicemails to various other podcasts that are out there, whether it's on our network or someone else's network. But definitely check out the Next Level Podcast Network, Next Level Online Podcast Network, for all the great podcasts are available there. Yes. And that's pretty much our show. Thanks, everybody, for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.